Australopithecus, which appeared around 400 AD, was the first human species to walk upright on two feet. It can be said that walking upright is an important feature that allows one to use both hands for other activities, which has led to great progress in human evolution. Homo erectus used fire and language, and later Homo neanderthalensis was characterized by burial of corpses. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, are divided into various types, of which Cro-Magnon man is a representative Paleolithic era human. The Paleolithic age is characterized by a mobile lifestyle, hunting and gathering, chipped stone tools, and living in caves or huts. There were also cave paintings left behind by Paleolithic people, the most representative ones being the Altamira cave paintings and the Lascaux cave paintings, which mainly depicted animals representing hopes of successful hunting. Venus of Willendorf is a Paleolithic female statue discovered in Willendorf, Austria and is a representative relic symbolizing fertility and abundance. In the Neolithic age, more advanced tools such as axes, knives, and pickaxes made from ground stones were used, and comb-patterned pottery, patch-patterned pottery, and Julman pottery began to be made and used. The most important thing in the Neolithic age was the beginning of farming and hoarding, which was called the Neolithic Revolution. In the Neolithic age, when farming and hoarding began, settled life began and people lived in straw thatched huts. In addition, clans lived together and formed a clan society and primitive beliefs emerge like praying for successful farming. Primitive beliefs include animism, which is the belief that all natural objects have souls, and megaliths worship. Megaliths worship is the act of setting up large stones and praying for abundance. Murals painted during the Neolithic age mainly depict farming and raising livestock, and the Neolithic Revolution can be inferred through the murals as well. As humans began farming and ranching, which absolutely required water, people gradually began to gather and live around large rivers. And when the tribes united, city-states gradually began to emerge, forming an ancient civilization. The ancient civilizations that we commonly refer to as the four major civilizations are the Egyptian civilization, Mesopotamian civilization, Indus civilization, and Chinese civilization. The first civilization to arise among the four major civilizations was the Mesopotamian civilization which developed between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers around 3500 BC. It was formed when the Sumerians built city-states such as Ur. This civilization was located along two rivers making it a fairly fertile area and its open topographical characteristics led to active trade with the outside world. It was an area where many people gathered and active trade took place, but at the same time, the lives of the Sumerians were unstable due to foreign invasions. Therefore, a worldly religious view that aspires to a comfortable life was developed and the Epic of Gilgamesh is a relic that shows this. This poem contains the message to cherish the present life. The 
Mesopotamian civilization also built huge temples called ziggurats. We can infer that people of this era believed in polytheism. The ziggurat is made of mud bricks and baked bricks and is very magnificent. In Mesopotamian civilization, theocracy was used to increase the authority of the ruling class and the king was established as the representative of God to rule over the governed class. The Mesopotamian civilization is said to have a lunar solar calendar, sexagesimal system and cuneiform writing, and letters were written on clay tablets using something like a sharp reed. Babylonia is a representative country that emerged from the Mesopotamian civilization. It was founded by the Amur people and its representative king was King Hammurabi. King Hammurabi maintained a very strong royal authority and there is the famous code of Hammurabi, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Its rules had a retaliatory nature, such as if anyone committed a robbery, they would be put to death. And if they bruised the nobleman's eye, they would also get a black eye themselves. There was also a cruel law that if a common heart of noble's eye or leg, he had to cut off his own hand. And if a common broke a noble's tooth, he had to cut off his own tongue. If a noble injured a commoner's eye or leg, he had to pay one mina of silver. Also, if a noble broke a commoner's tooth, he had to pay one third of a silver mina. It also had the element of discriminatory treatment based on class. Egyptian civilization was formed around the Nile River around 3000 BC. The Nile River periodically flooded, making the land fertile, which led to the emergence of several city-states in the region. With the emergence of these city-states, the Egyptian civilization was formed, and a powerful unified kingdom emerged that integrated these city-states and developed into the Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, and New Kingdom. Unlike the Mesopotamian civilization, this Egyptian civilization was quite closed and exclusive. Because it was surrounded by deserts and the sea, trade with other regions was challenging, and there were no invasions by foreigners. Therefore, the Egyptians were more interested in the world after death than in their present life, and as a result, they developed a religious view of the afterlife. So they made mummies and pyramids and placed the Book of the Dead inside them. The Book of the Dead is a guide for the dead. In the Egyptian civilization, where a powerful unified kingdom continued for a long time, the king was deified as a pharaoh, the son of the sun god, and a powerful theocracy was implemented. Thank you for watching. This is Leah. I worked alongside Tony and Gina. The Emergence of Mankind and the Birth of Civilization, Part 2 will be forthcoming. Thank you.